In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what what we we have have done done, and by what what we we have have left left undone. We We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you sent upon the disciples the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, look upon your church and open our hearts to the power of the Spirit. Kindle in us the fire of your love and strengthen our lives for service in your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were gathered together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came the sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. En los últimos días, dice Dios, derramaré mi espíritu sobre toda la gente. Und es so sus hijos e hijas que profetizarán, sus jóvenes tendrán, sus ancianos tendrán un espíritu de profetizarán, y haré maravillas de los que van a ser And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Nema in die letzte da, sagt Gott, ich ist mein Geist. Auswehr. Auswehr. 
En ce jour-là, je répondrai de mon esprit et ils profitiseront. Je ferai paraître des... Kaidoso terta ento orano ano dugo apoy at makapal na usok. Magdidilim ang araw at ang buwan ay pupula katulad ng dugo. Feciori voștri și fetele voastre vor proroci. Tinerii voștri vor avea vedeni și bătrânii voștri Y la luna se pondrá roja como la sangre antes de que llegue el grande y glorioso día del Señor. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before coming, the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. <clears throat> we'll read the psalm responsively. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things, too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to the dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but in the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, in all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. 
For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the seven years that I have been the pastor of Peace Lutheran and Green Oak, there have been too many weeks when I have had to write my sermon while mourning the systemic racism an active violent racism in this country that has ended in the death of another unarmed black person. It's been too many times where I was going to say something, but I was afraid of what my nearly all white congregation would think or say in response. And now here we are in this strange sermon setting, and I'm losing it a bit because I feel like my black neighbors and friends' lives are in danger. I'm reminded how many of you have commented on the danger of my beloved neighborhood of Wilkinsburg, but what if one of my black neighbors took a walk through Green Oak, jogged through Green Oak? Would my neighbors be safe in the neighborhood that our church is located in? I'm honestly concerned. I'm not really interested in having a conversation with anyone who thinks that racism isn't a problem in our country. I am interested in having the conversation of, okay, well, I'm not sure what does racism look like if it's not just about disliking people with more melanin than me. We all participate in a system that has devalued black and brown people from the moment we started building this country with boatloads of kidnapped persons. And it's not your fault. You didn't buy or own a slave, but you and I have benefited from generations of people who did. And the policies and the politics that came after it. And black and brown people have not. Here I was all excited about Pentecost and I just got stuck in the grief and anger I have for this country, for black families who are terrified for their children. But we can and should talk about the day of Pentecost in the midst of grief and the Holy Spirit showing up to bring joy and relief and community. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes it possible for us to follow Jesus, to trust Jesus, to leave behind all the other things we want to trust to keep us safe, to leave behind our fear, our defensiveness that we cling to in order to keep the world the way we like it. Human beings are in and of themselves incapable of living up to what God desires and commands. But the Holy Spirit makes it possible for the disciples and for all of us to be who Jesus wants us to be, to be the neighbors God created us to be. The Holy Spirit is the one who continues to gather the church and send the church, continues to surprise the church and challenge the church, calling people into leadership while breaking barriers of race and gender, ability and class to in create intentional, Christ-centered community. In the reading from Acts, the disciples were with the whole crowd of people 
celebrating the Jewish holy day of Pentecost, 50 days after Passover. This holy day is a bit of a harvest Thanksgiving festival mixed with a thanksgiving for the giving of the Torah, the law, to the people. And the Holy Spirit turns up in the midst of this respectable traditional gathering and turns it upside down. The Holy Spirit addresses devout Jews from every nation in their own language. The Holy Spirit showed up in a violent wind and in fire. Honestly, I would have been terrified. And it took someone as unlikely as Peter to make sense of this and see God at work, to see the action of the Holy Spirit and the purpose of this event. The end of this chapter is Peter's great prophetic sermon. And then this former Jesus denier and general blockhead in the Gospels participates in the Holy Spirit's gathering of the first Christ-centered community of believers. Meanwhile, in the reading from John, the disciples were alone, locked away, not trusting anyone outside their circle, fearing repercussions of their being associated with this activist Rabbi Jesus. Grieving and frightened, Jesus comes to them, risen from the dead, just as he said, giving them the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, just as he said, empowering them to continue the work he started, despite their fears, despite their grief. He gave them his peace and sent them out to continue to remove any and every obstacle in the way of people seeing God in their lives and seeing the world and their neighbors through God's eyes. The Holy Spirit comforts and empowers and sends them out. We too are gathered and sent by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit both draws you into community and pushes you into your neighborhood to show God's love. The Holy Spirit works to break down barriers that prevent people from gathering in community making the church a very intentional community of all different sorts of experiences. And the Holy Spirit sends that community out to continue Jesus' work of recognizing strangers as neighbors, recognizing neighbors as God's beloved children, and helping people to see themselves as beloved children of God as well. I've been reading the work of a Lutheran pastor recently, that has affected me deeply and I want to share it with you. Pastor Duncan is a formerly incarcerated black man ordained into the ELCA, the whitest denomination in America. He wrote a book a few years ago called Dear Church, a love letter from a black preacher to the whitest denomination in America. I'm reading that book and I'm going to invite you to read it too. I have copies at the church and I'm ordering more. It's part manifesto, part confession, and all love letter, according to its jacket. It offers a bold new vision for the future of our denomination and the broader Christian community. It rejects that narrative of church decline and calls everyone, leaders and laity alike, to the front lines of the church's renewal through racial equality and justice. Can the church listen to those in the margins and allow for the possibility that the Holy Spirit really is going to pour out power on those who have been oppressed and give them a prophetic voice for the whole church? Will we be able to listen to our siblings of color and learn from their experiences which differ vastly from our own? Do we understand? that when we pray, come Holy Spirit, she might come with fire and languages other than English to do God's work. Can we be a bit frightened of that possibility and at the same time be empowered to listen carefully? Can we hear the voices of those who have been oppressed, threatened, and lynched, speaking God's word of holy judgment and then be empowered to act in ways that continue to do Jesus' work of loving our neighbor, 
lifting up the poor and disenfranchised. I pray that we can. I pray that I can. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen.
we confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Despite our distance, we give thanks together for our many blessings and for the ways the Holy Spirit enables us to share our gifts with the church, the world, and each other. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Give peace with your breath to the whole creation. Breathe life where there is only death, and be present with those who struggle to breathe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Help us to work for a nation that values the lives and the breath of all people. Empower us to speak up where we see lives devalued by racism and hate. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, and hospice workers, chaplains, and counselors as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. Help us to desire to give more than we receive and to acknowledge our common humanity with all we encounter. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we may rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of hope. As you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, Lord, in in your mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, We place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.